Hey guys, welcome back to the Little Big Synths YouTube channel. Today I just wanted to give you guys a look at my modular synth setup. And as you might have noticed, I've definitely collected quite a few more modules since my last few modular synth videos. So I thought it'd be really cool to give you guys a bit of an update on the progress of my modular synth build. But before I dive into this whole modular setup here, I just want to take a second to talk to you guys a bit about one of my main goals for this year, which is to focus on making more music and get around to releasing a few solid singles. Now, this is something that I've been really wanting to do for a little while now and just never really got around to it. But with the addition of the modular synth and this whole modular setup, I've been super inspired as of lately and I definitely think that it's gonna make things a whole lot easier. So with that being said, when I finally get around to recording that music, I'm gonna wanna share it with you guys and that is where a DistroKid comes in. So as you may already know, DistroKid is an online distribution service that makes it super easy for musicians and artists to get their music out into the world. So basically all you have to do is upload your music to DistroKid and let DistroKid do the rest. DistroKid will then make that music available on all of the major streaming platforms, including Apple Music, Amazon Music, Spotify, and so many more. And not only is the whole process super easy and super quick, but it's actually one of the most affordable options out there at only $19.99 per year. With your subscription, you get to upload as much music as you want and you get to keep all of your earnings. And to make things even better, you can sign up using my VIP link and get 7% off your first year. And this is honestly a win-win because not only will you be getting a discount on your subscription, but you'll also be contributing and supporting the Little Big Sense YouTube channel. And honestly, that would mean a whole lot to me. So if you yourself are an artist or musician, definitely go check out DistroKid today. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the modular synth setup. All right, so I'm gonna try to get through this as quickly and swiftly as possible. Uh, but basically the setup consists of my uh, modular synth here, a Arturia Keystep Pro, a Roland SEO2, a mixer, uh, my uh, Zoom H6, and a Zoom MS70 CDR. Sorry, the mixer is a Behringer Xenix 802. I don't know why I skipped the name. So starting over here with the modular synth, I'm gonna talk to you guys a bit about uh, the uh, modules here, but I won't go too far into depth with them just because there are a lot of good uh, videos out there that explain what they do and how they work. Uh, I'm, I just wanna give you guys a bit of an overview so what I have here is the entire Dreadbox Chromatic series on this top row here, uh, including this antidote down here. Um, and these are all, all of the modules that are available in this series as of uh, February uh, 2021. And um, I also have a second Hysteria VCO because this uh, VCO is actually really awesome. It's an analog VCO and it sounds amazing. Um, so two VCOs is always better than one, of course. And then over here on the right hand corner, I have the Expert Sleepers Disting Mark IV, which is the Swiss army knife when it comes to modules in the whole modular world. Uh, this module is only four HP, so it's super small, but it packs so much stuff inside there. There are a ton of different algorithms, all ranging from uh, things like LFOs, oscillators, effects, and just so much more stuff. And then down here, I have a few modules from the Erica Sense Pico series. Uh, and that is the Erica Sense Pico voice, which is an oscillator or synth voice actually, because um, you can actually just send it some pitch CV and a trigger and you're good to go. Also uh, two Pico drums, which are sample based drum uh, modules, and then a Pico mix, which is a, just a three input uh, uh, mixer. And I think this one can handle CVs and, and uh, audio signals, so pretty cool. And then here I have the Mutable Instruments Plats or Plates. Um, this is considered uh, what they call a macro oscillator. Um, and this, just like the Pico voice, can also be played by itself with no other additional modules. Um, it does have like a built-in VCA uh, envelope kind of thing. So um, again, just send it some pitch and some triggers and you're good to go. And uh, this thing has a wide variety of sounds and a very intuitive interface. Uh, the sonic possibilities out of this thing are, are pretty amazing. And then I have a bunch of these blank 3D printed panels that were made by a company called 3D Waves. And they make some really cool stuff, including like stands and other accessories for your tabletop synths, such as the Volcas, and definitely check them out. And currently I'm waiting for a Pico drum to arrive, uh, the Pico drum two, which is a synthesized uh, drum voice versus these uh, sample uh, based drum modules. And I'm gonna wanna mainly use that one for uh, kick drums because I want to be able to have a dedicated kick drum. And then these ones, uh, these are modules for uh, the rest of the other uh, drum elements. So let me go ahead and bring up a picture of what the finished uh, system should look like. All right, here's a mock-up of the finished system. And as you can see, I'm definitely getting pretty close to completing this build. 
Right now I'm only missing a few more modules, seven to be exact. And those modules are Immutable Instruments Ripples, which is an awesome analog four pole filter, Immutable Instruments Veils, which is a quad VCA, and I don't really have any VCAs here at the moment, and as the old saying goes, you can never have enough VCAs, so I figured four would be a good start. A Make Noise Maths, which is a very powerful function generator that will basically provide some additional LFOs, envelopes, and even some signal processing. A Tip Top Audio 1, which is a sample playback module. A couple of Pico DSPs, which are digital effects uh, that I mainly intend to use for processing some of the drum sounds. And finally, a Cubit Electronics NanoRan 2, which will provide some randomness and additional movement to the system. So I'd say I'm about 70% done with this first case, and I say first because I really, really want to add a second 3U or 6U rack brew case in the future, which will definitely not be happening anytime soon, but I think it's okay to dream a bit. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the Keystep Pro. Uh, the Arteria Keystep Pro is doing all the sequencing and controlling for this entire setup. It is the heart or the brain of this uh, setup, and I absolutely love the Keystep Pro. I was super excited about uh, the release of this thing uh, back in early January um, and I was super excited about it and as an owner of the original BeatStep Pro and the Keystep, uh, the Keystep Pro is definitely like a perfect combination or blend of both those those devices and so much more. So, but prior to getting the modular synth, I was mainly using it for MIDI uh, with the like Volcas and the Boutique Series stuff. Um, but after getting my modular synth, I was able to take full advantage of all the analog outputs in the back. So all the CV and gates and triggers and all that good stuff, which has made the Arteria Keystep that much more valuable in my studio. And then moving on over here, I have the Roland SEO2. Uh, this was the boutique uh, synth that was uh, that was made in collaboration with Studio Electronics. This is an amazing uh, three VCO mono synth. I've had this for quite a while now and I absolutely love it. But basically I've been using it to accompany the modular synth. Not only is it super versatile, but it also has a CV and gate in the back as well. So uh, just kind of sticking with the entire uh, analog uh, signal flow here. And just backing up a little bit, uh, all of the audio from all this these modules are going out into my mixer. For my mixers, main outs are going out to my monitors and the control room out is going into my Zoom H6 into a stereo uh, channel or a stereo pair on the Zoom H6. Uh, for recording and then I have the Zoom MS70 CDR which I'm using for effects on a per channel basis using the uh, effects loop or the effects uh, send on the mixer. So the modular synth is obviously an amazing sound design tool and I can honestly get lost in it for hours just making super crazy far out sounds and just uh, just tweaking to my heart's content. But the way I've been using the modular as of recently is, is more kind of like a groove box kind of a thing going on here. And to finish things up, I just want to show you guys how quick and easy it is to get a jam or idea going with the Keystep Pro and this whole modular setup.
All right, guys, so that's uh, the modular setup at the moment. Uh, I'm going to continue building it, and I'll give you guys an update as uh, I collect from some more modules. Uh, again, I'm super excited uh, for this setup, and i um, super excited to get around to making some music. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Little Big Sense YouTube channel, and just stay tuned for more videos from Little Big Sense.